You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Greg Burgess from the band Allegion. Their newest album, Apoptosis, came out in 2019. And since then, they have followed it up with a, a cover of a song by Yes, as well as an EP called Concerto in D minor, where they displayed more of their classical influences. There's a lot of speculation going on right now as to what the future of this band is going to sound like. And hopefully, Greg is going to shed some light on that for us. Greg, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. And welcome. Welcome to the pit. Oh, dude, thanks for having me. I don't know about that shedding light on it because I don't think I even know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> I think the best place for us to begin right now is just, what's your favorite song by Soil Work? Oh, man. Oh, dude. Oh, wow. Just like, that's just like a gut punch. Uh, I wasn't expecting it, and uh, I don't know how I'm going to choose. Um, <laughs> oh. Man, I, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Bastard Chain. Okay, that's a great tune. So you you saw this band live and they became your favorite band, right? Uh, yeah, well, actually, that that is true. I mean, my favorite band was Megadeth for a very long, right. long time. And right. uh, they just, Megadeth is kind of just riding out their uh, glory years, it seems. So... They've been playing the same set for years now. <laughs> and fair enough, so, they've earned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course they have, you know. Um, and then, uh, so, and then I saw Soil Work twice, and I was blown away every time. And I was like, you know what? I think that this is, and the every time the set list was pretty vastly different. So that's why I, I was like, yeah, I think they've they've taken the the place in my heart. So you like to give credit where credit is due. Yeah. So I need to get into your origin story. Take me back. To, tell me about a young Greg. What was influencing you? What was around you? And how did you discover your passion for music? Well, okay. So I grew up in uh, a suburb of Washington, D.C. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're you're in a capital city like that, it's, it's very interesting as as a, just like a young kid because national news is kind of local news at some point. Yeah. Yeah. You know it must I mean? be kind of bizarre. So you're, you're a little bit just washed over with, you know, just the happenings of the world, I guess. And like a lot of it, <clears throat> I don't even know why this is being talked about, but like, I just remember it being such an odd like thing when I moved away from there. So, uh, and I, I, I mean, I don't even know if this influenced the music or not, but I just, uh, oh man, this is just, I'm just meandering and not making a damn point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> how, about, how about I just I shut the hell up and we'll talk about music. So, <laughs> well, not I just I always liked uh, you know the darker side of, of things, uh, you know, just growing up. And then uh, I don't even know. There was like a made-for-TV movie. I don't even know. And someone had this like I don't even know if it was a chick or it was a dude, but they had a really large mohawk, and uh, they had a guitar. And that's like I'm like, yep, that's that's what I want to do. And then I always start my parents that. I was going to get a mohawk and like shave my head and tattoo my skull, you know, but uh, <laughs> well, what kind of music, it. what kind of music did your parents like? Um, my dad, my dad's from, uh, London. So oh, he okay. was, you know, very into the Beatles. Um, right. And, uh, I think he like in his younger days, I think he may have managed golden earring. Uh, wow. I remember this story from him. So, <clears throat> you know, Radar Love, for anybody that doesn't know, they might not know the band, but they probably will know Radar Love. Maybe. <laughs> oh, God, I'm old. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm there with you. Yeah. And then uh, my mom was into, like, Johnny Mathis okay. and stuff like that. So it was very much, you know, very eclectic. And then uh, they had, like a Bach Buster CD where like a whole bunch of Bach played on like 80 synths and that kind of really engaged me on the classical front for a okay. while. 
And then they got into like Yanni, and that continues to this day. I'm a huge Yanni fan. So, so at some point you heard Megadeth, and that was kind of like an aha moment for you, right? Yeah, I mean, I would I would say that I uh, it was yeah because we didn't have like MTV or anything in our house, so it was when I go over to a friend's house or whatever, and I heard Symphony of Destruction, and then like just got goosebumps. And like got afraid of it, and I loved it. And then <laughs> it was that, and like uh, seasons in the abyss. It was like ninety two ish when all that stuff was coming out, and that's where like my formative, you know, my biggest impression as far as music. That's when it hit me around then. So all the bands that came out around ninety two in the metal. So and is that when you're still in high school? Uh, this is pre high school. Oh, no way. Yeah. Pretty high right. So then coming in, becoming a teenager, did you start some bands in high school? Yeah, I had, um, I had a band, and we formed in like 91. Um, and yeah, actually, you know, it had to be, maybe you were right. Maybe it had to be, it was like junior high, I think. But, right. Yeah, so, but it was, it was very much Slayer, Megadeth, in like Sepultura influenced. Right. Right. And so those going through high school and then later on, you ended up studying classical guitar for many, many years and yeah. kind of put the metal off to the side. So do you think when you returned and you started a Legion, is that you think maybe why you jumped into tech death is kind of like you missed the metal so much you wanted to go into the deep end. Cause you could arguably say that tech death is like the most metal of the metals. So were you just like itching for a fix? Do you think? I wouldn't call it the most metal of the metals. I would call it the, the guitar nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, which okay, fair I'm, enough. I'm definitely guilty of that. Um, no, I mean, so it, it came to, you know, you graduated college or sorry, high school. And it was like, Hey, what do you want to do with your life? You know, you have to pick a career and, you know, I loved, I loved guitar. So it was like, uh, you know, I want to, I want to play guitar and they're like, cool, pick one classical or jazz. You know, if you're going to go to get a degree, those are your options. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, now people are going to MI and studying like rock music and stuff. That wasn't really a, I mean, I'm sure that was a thing back then. It just wasn't on my radar and I don't think my parents would have gone for it anyway. So I had already been playing classical at that point anyway, so it was an easy, uh, you know, easy decision to go in the classical realm. But it, w it was really just to uh, – my parents just needed me to have a fallback plan. If I was going to do the, you know, guitar thing, I needed at least a degree in guitar that I could go get a job, you know. And it worked great. Like, it was, it was the perfect plan. My parents were very uh, smart in that way so shout out to the the burgesses <laughs> that's right parental <laughs> units for the win awesome but either way you you kind of did jump into the deep end and uh i would like to know just about the band formation for what it was like for you in the early days how did this all happen how did you meet the other band members um so uh yeah i so i moved to colorado uh to get my master's um, this was around 2006, 2007. And, uh, yeah, I just like, I, I came to Colorado to, you know, I got into DU and into the classical guitar master's program. Um, and it was less like, you know, where I was before in Cincinnati and like, uh, and, and Lexington, Kentucky, there wasn't, I couldn't find the personnel to play in a metal band. Right. So it was like, I'm going to move to a bigger town and it'll be easier to find people to form a band. So as soon as I got to Colorado, that was my first priority it was like, you know, I want to be in a metal band. That's, that's all I've ever wanted to do. Uh, I'll do my masters, but I'll do this band thing uh, first. And uh, I just, you know, my space was King at the point And I, you know, I'll, this band Allegiance hits me up and they needed a guitar player. So, okay. and, that's, and that's really how it was. They had played one show or two shows, was it? And then their guitar player, uh, uh, he fled the state, 
I th- it like stole a vehicle, fled the state. Wow. <laughs> so like under nefarious, uh, nefarious reasons, he, he like fled Colorado. So I got the gig and, uh, yeah. And then it was just a lot of practicing. Uh, cause I wasn't, I'd been playing classical so long. My electric skills weren't up to snuff, uh, to be in the band permanently. So it was just kind of like, Hey, I'll fill in. Cause they had all these gigs. And then I just practiced my, my, you know, my little tail off and, uh, they were like, yeah, well, just give him the gig because he works hard and he'll get it. So, and I did. <laughs> okay. So I, I didn't realize that. And so now fast forwarding uh, with the writing process, I'm sure it's changed a bit over the years, but how does it usually come out for you? How do song ideas begin? Do you usually sit down with the guitar and just like a tape recorder or do you, you like to like write things down on the computer? Uh, yeah, I mean, now it's all done uh, in Guitar Pro. That's all I use. Uh, that's how I write. Uh, I'm one of those guys, if, if I don't notate it, if I don't write it down, I forget it immediately. So some people will record it and listen to it. You know, I'm one of those guys, I have to see it. I can read anything you put in front of me, but if you want me just to, like, listen to something and play it back, that's a little bit more of a challenge for my skill set. I can do it, but it just takes me a long time. If I can just read it, I can do it immediately. Like, I'm pretty good at sight reading, probably from the classical thing. So, yeah, I just, I write everything in Guitar Pro, and then uh, all my arrangements, everything is done in Guitar Pro. And then I export, I even program the drums in Guitar Pro, export that into my DAW, and then record the so I after that. I, I am completely the same in my own process. I like that when you write the stuff down like that, I feel like it gets rid of the anxiety of forgetting it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I don't, what, anxiety of forgetting it. I don't even know what that's like anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just not a, a non-issue, right? Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, so obviously this band has been tied to science. You guys have been kind of basically the, the science band of tech death for a while. And uh, the subject of science obviously gives you a lot of different uh, things to talk about. Uh, do you, is this always been a thing that you like the su- subject of science? Like, do you like watching science documentaries and stuff like that? Um, I do. I love it. Um, it's, it, you know, for me, I, it's, you have to write something you're passionate about, you know, and I just, you know, learning, about that type of stuff is super fascinating to me. So that's, it was kind of, I'll give our original vocalist, Ezra Haynes, uh, a lot of credit for this because he was really into that as well. And we kind of latched on that together because I was like, oh, dude, that's cool. That's a great, you know, I I like this. And then it just, that got the ball rolling on what kind of the mission statement for the band was going to be for a lot you know, for a long time until 2021, where it's no longer the mission statement. But <laughs> that's right, because this uh, the last album, Apoptosis, is really symbolic. I mean, the, the the name being about cellular death, like a program death. This is sort of like you guys shedding the dead skin in a way. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, that, like change is inevitable, and especially if if anybody's paid attention to, you know, our band, our turnover rate for personnel is pretty high. <laughs> right. um, and unfortunately that, that just like, it's a hard life. And, uh, it's, I mean, also, you know, you being in a band with, you know, four other personalities is, is a challenge in and of itself. And then just the life of like not being at home, maybe struggling to pay rent because, you know, the tour wasn't, uh, it didn't pay as well as it should have because like your vehicle broke down or there was, you know, expenses that were completely not, uh, thought of beforehand or, you know, you, you know, you can't know what you don't know. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's a hard life. So we've had a lot of turnover and I think that the idea behind apoptosis was one it was the science thing but also that you know when we got when Corey left to go be a lawyer and we got boo boo that was kind of like all right cool no more lineup changes and then sure enough (laughs) yeah just wait just wait a year and then we'll have more so (laughs) over two years 
Well, with uh, Apoptosis, you that was the first record where you actually didn't have any lyrical input of your own, right? Right. That was the first record I didn't write any lyrics. Yeah. And you, so now that you kind of you're saying that you maybe you feel a little bit burnt out on the science subject, have you have is there any new lyrical content for the new album yet? And is oh yeah, the, anything the new to records, do with science? Yeah, the new record is done. Um, oh. Yeah, we're we're all done. We're everything's turned in. Son we're of a just, bitch. Yeah, we're just uh, the the first uh, single will drop in October. So there you go. That wow. you're the, the, there's your exclusive. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I um, COVID has been a very odd time to be in a band, obviously. I mean, yeah. it's been weird for everybody, but to right, be in, yeah. in, in a band where it's like, wow, I'm used to being on the road for months and months and months out of a year to go from like that to being a complete homebody and not having to be on the road. Um, and then, you know, just experiencing the band has experienced a lot of tragedy since of apoptosis. So like I, it's, I think that where I am still very passionate about science and I still love it, Riley is not so much. And it was kind of, we kind of discussed it that maybe, you know, it's like, Hey man, if you're not passionate about the subject, your performance suffers because you don't have that emotional connection to it. So it's hard to sell. And it's almost like uh, you're kind of like regurgitating bullshit instead of, giving like weight emotional weight behind your performance so when we had that discussion i was like yeah okay and uh so let's maybe take a break from it maybe not complete break because i you know i really love it but um uh you know i i want everybody to be really gung-ho about what we're doing you know yeah and, uh, to perform their best so that decision was made, uh, in the interest of his performance. Uh, and I mean, and, and another pr- point to that is that we thought maybe we had been, um, uh, ignoring, uh, a big chunk of, uh, the metal community. Um, when we're, you know, cause people who are not interested in science, maybe they won't connect with our music as much. So, you know, in a way it's one to get a better performance out of Riley. And two is maybe that, you know, we can say something, you know, the average person can kind of vibe with it instead of just, you know, I love the fact that like we have molecular biologists and NASA in our audience and I never want that to stop, but it, it was, it was, uh, we kind of, I felt like we were very narrowed focus and, uh, you know, we need to grow to make our business survive, you know? Right. Yeah. And to just keep, keep doing it really would have just maybe eventually been like pigeonholing yourselves, uh, creatively. Uh, so with this new album, how, do you have some lyrical input? Um, I wrote, I wrote a little bit, um, uh, I wrote a little bit and our new drummer wrote a little bit. Um, but it was mostly Riley. Yeah. Uh, there's one song that, uh, on the record, uh, that deals with, uh, my, my best friend's suicide. And so I, the, the title, uh, called home was taken right out of his suicide note and some of the, you know, and I had a lot to say on that subject, um, we all deal with tragedy in our own different ways. And mine was to, you know, write music and songs about it. Um, so like I'd say two weeks after my roommate, my best friend committed suicide, Riley's good friend committed suicide. And then Boo Boo's father-in-law, uh, like randomly out of the blue, uh, just passed. So it was just like a lot of, uh, death going around. So, you know, that painted if to paint a picture of what the new record is, it's a lot about loss and that the it's 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 just a lot about loss. (laughs) 
<laughs> as I laugh after that. <laughs> I'm really sorry to hear about all that, obviously. And uh, did it feel therapeutic afterwards when so you actually got some of your ideas down and felt like you expressed things the way that you wanted to express them? Did it, did it feel like it helped? Um, in a way, you know, it's, it's hard in 2021 because I, it's hard to, I think a lot of times you'll go into things with the best intentions and it seems like it's always going to offend someone. You know what I mean? So I, yes, <laughs> I know exactly a, what you're talking about. You know, there's a lot of apprehension on my part. It's like what I w- needed to do to get through stuff. You know, I, you know, we filmed a music video for it and it was pretty heavy and, you know, like I had, we had to change it multiple times. It's like, man, is this going to like upset other people? You know what I mean? Is this, I mean, because it's, it was for our therapeutic, you know, and artistic expression to kind of deal with our grieving process, but is this going to trigger other people? And it's hard to, it has the potential to, so it's, it's a very hard uh, line to walk and one that I don't think you're going to be a hundred percent successful at. So it's kind of like, how can we be as fulfilling to ourselves without, you know, triggering a huge, you know, uh, yeah. section of, you know, our listener. So hopefully we'll be successful. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, you live once, right? And you that, need to express yourself. Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, I guess if, if, if people get upset about this, they'll be upset, I don't know, for a month and then they'll find something else to be pissed at. So Yeah. Even a, even a month seems a little long. Uh, long <laughs> so you, <yeah. laughs> you have a classical background. Uh, you know a lot of Bach. Uh, and you showed off a lot of your classical influence in concerto and D minor. Uh, but you've also been uh, you're you're the kind of guy who's just a student of music. You're you're always perpetually learning, and then you've taken on getting more familiar with jazz over the last couple of years. I wanted to talk about the moment when you admitted to Per Nilsson that you actually never listened to Alan Holdsworth and he just reamed you out for it. <laughs> wow, man, you've been doing your homework. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. What was that like? Was he pretty, like, was he mad or just kind of, like, annoyed joking? <laughs> oh, yeah, he was, I mean, uh, you know. Some people get really uh, offended because, like, I I had an old friend who he played jazz when we were roommates, and then I connected with him years and years later, and he was talking about jazz. Like, I play jazz now, and I was like, "Well, you you played jazz before," and he said, "No, no, no, no." He's like, "I get it now." Uh, Like talking about it, like he was like a a born again Christian or something like that. Have you ever run into that? It's like, or did at some point for you, did jazz actually click? Um, you know, I I don't even think it's clicked yet if I'm honest. Um, but, uh, you know, I, if you're not learning, you're, you're, you're dying, you know what I mean? Like if you're not growing. So it's the constant thing, man. I just want to be better, uh, better at my instrument and just better, you know, more well-rounded and just be fulfilled within the realm of music for what I can do. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I, uh, understand i mean i i definitely have a better understanding now than i did <laughs> when i had that conversation with pear but i still don't think i'm there yet um it's st- it's still a slow process and you know jazz is quite is such a complex art form it's not one of those things that you can just understand how it's going like there's a lot of harmonic analysis and and all that so and to to find out what people are doing and I guess my my kind of interest in this is just to understand harmony and, and playing over dense harmonic passages to apply to my own music. So I may never fully understand jazz, but it, it's it's OK because I, I don't intend to play jazz, if that makes right. sense. Yeah, no, that does make a lot of sense. And this kind of brings me to uh, my next question is because uh, you were you're were interviewing Devin Townsend and he basically was talking about his his own journey as an artist to finally just unleash his creativity and just write whatever he likes and not care about what it is necessarily. And you said for yourself, you felt that 
writing in such a brutal art form for it is for a legion sometimes is actually unnatural to you. You have to put yourself into the mindset of writing that type of music. Do you feel now that you've gone over that threshold and now you can actually unleash your creativity? Because you've done the the cover of the Yes song, Roundabout, which was absolutely perfect, by the way. And also you did Concerto in D minor. So is it like, is now a legion finally letting you unleash your creativity instead of making you kind of feel like you have to write in a specific style all the time? Man, this is one of the best interviews I've I've ever had. <laughs> you have done so much research. I am so impressed. Um, damn. Uh, <laughs> well, good, good on you, sir. This is uh, this is quite the. <laughs> Thank dude, you. Yeah, dude, I smell my brain cells just burning right now <laughs> with having to think. Um, actually, dude, I would think it's harder now. Actually. Oh. Um, I, I was mean, not just, expecting you to say that. Yeah. No. It is. It is. Um, huh. I, I think that, you know, your life and your external stimuli play a big por- portion of, uh, at least for in my experience and, and the way that I operate, like when we did apoptosis, there was a lot of negative shit that surrounded that record. And so, I mean, whereas I look back on it now and I can really, really enjoy some of the songs, I was like, man, we did a good job here and here and here. I also hear a lot of things that um, we did not do a good job on. And that's the first time I can actually say that. Um, And and then with this record, um, we adopted a completely new model for writing. One in which that every single person in this band had a hand in the writing. And that has never happened before. How did you do that? uh, Well... Mike and I, we demoed out our songs like normal. We brought them to a couple writing retreats and then everybody had a say in what happened. You know, sometimes Riley would jump on the keyboards and was like, I think we should put this here. And he would like help with, you know, and we would do a lot of arrangement as uh, a four piece. This is before Jeff was in the band. And then, um, and it was extremely painful because it came to a lot of things where I think not one of my songs on the new record came out unscathed. Every single one. Uh, no, that's not true. I, I'd say one that. Uh, ah, wait, no, that one. I, I had one where it was completely, uh, completely. Uh, they did not like it at at the end so and that's that hasn't happened in this group ever so uh it's been a very hard writing process and everybody you know it's there might be this like um thought process because of the high turnover in this band that i'm a tyrant (laughs) because i'm the only one still here but it is a total democracy and uh, I'm finding myself more on the losing side of that democracy <laughs> as we go. So, I mean, in a roundabout way, to answer your question, it's nice been word. more painful than ever to write for the band. Uh, that's uh, not what I was expecting you to say, but uh, through this process, uh, writing it everything more collaboratively than previous uh, previous things, is it? Is it more satisfying in the end to you? You know, I think we're too close to the product to know. Um, okay. I, I think I won't know the answers to that until the album's out and we see what the reactions are going to be. Because, okay. you know, I. It, it's really hard to judge at this point. I have no clue if the album is going to do insanely well. I have no clue if the album is going to bomb. Um, I know I like the music. I know that, you know, everybody worked really hard on it. There's parts of it that I couldn't be more proud of. And those are the parts of it where I feel very disconnected from it because there was so many hands in the kitchen, you know? Right. So it's going to be, one of those things that I'll have to look back at it in hindsight. Yeah. 
and really know what to do because my my emotions on the record are running all over the place. Um, but that being said, uh, it's the music's really good. You know, it, it's it's a different way to do it, and I think you know it's hard for old dogs to learn new tricks, and yeah. uh, you know they, as we want to grow, you know, as musicians right. and everything like that, I'm going through a lot of growing pains with it. Um, but everybody in the band is insanely talented and has, you know, good things to say. So we should let them say it. And I kind of, they kind of like backed me up when I wanted to do a long block concerto. So I should shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> I like to get into some of your uh, other hobbies that you have outside of music. So you really like hiking. I love hiking. Yeah. What, what do you do? You like? Do you have a, any pets, or do you usually hike alone? Uh, I mean, I have. I have. We just got another cat. I got. Two, I took two cats, but um, it's kind of odd. I just. Um, I just kind of moved. Um, I'm kind of a gypsy right now, so I'm with my wife in Ottawa. Uh, oh. where I haven't really experienced the hiking here yet. Um, whereas like I kind of, a lot of my, most of my belongings are in storage in Denver and then my permit address is in Florida, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, until I have to leave your country, then I'll maybe go stay with my parents until I can return. Uh, it's just, it's kind of, it's all over the place, but, uh, I do love hiking. <laughs> <laughs> You, you mentioned in an in interview that you might have a hard time remembering because he took a lot of shots. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, God. That one of your pet peeves, you said, is uh, music inside of Canadian Ubers, which I thought was uh, it's a little surprising. I live in BC. I didn't even know that we had Ubers in Canada. They're not a thing around here. Really? So, yeah. So what Dude. is the music in a Canadian Uber like? <laughs> Dude, it's it's crazy. So it's really odd. Because, so we live right on the the uh, uh, on the other side of the river from Ottawa. So like I can I can look at Parliament, <laughs> but uh, we're on the Quebec side. So, right. uh, Ubers cannot travel across provinces. So I can't get an Uber where I live, <laughs> but I can get one. Like if I get, if I like walk into Ontario, I can sometimes get an Uber to drive me back. Right. <laughs> Cause they're like, uh, I'm not allowed to do this, but I'll do it anyway. Um, but those, those, Uber, I, I know it's really bad pop music. It's incredibly bad pop music. And I, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's just Canadian pop music or it's, <laughs> or what. I mean, don't, don't, don't you guys have a government mandate? Like our radio stations must play yeah. a certain percentage Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I heard, I've, I've heard that a lot of, uh, a lot of people don't like that here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually trying to get yeah i'm get, trying to get people to talk to me about it because it's it's one of those weird catch 22 situations where it's like yeah i mean i guess in a way it's like good that we should try to help our own our country but at the same time it's it's actually xenophobic and racist isn't it <laughs> you know oh, man, so i didn't think about it like that <laughs> yeah well i mean you kind of have to i don't know 2021 man we got to be more woke <laughs> oh man uh, wow crazy man my, you're blowing my mind left and right in this interview uh <laughs> That's yeah, I, I mean i don't know it's just like it's just overly auto-tuned bullshit uh, <laughs> can i say that i'm sorry you can say yeah you can oh, okay. say whatever you want you're um, greg burgess <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can we can bleep that out yeah i don't know uh dude it's it's just really obnoxious um just auto-tuned garbage you know uh, and i'm not like I, i'm not one of those those metal heads that doesn't like pop music there's a lot of pop music i do like but not this pop music it's really bad so i agree I, i'm not sure what artists we're talking about but i, I think we both know the sound and uh <laughs> I, so you said that this album is going to come out in october right no, uh, just nope. the first single. I, I don't think oh. it's going to come out until next year. Okay. Yeah, it's so it's, you... kinda, it's an odd. Uh, COVID has made uh, production of uh, albums extremely. The, the production process is like way longer 
And then they had a huge fire in LA at a vinyl plant. So oh, no. that like crushed. So now vinyl has to be, it's like, it's like crazy. I think it's like a minimum of three, four months, uh, production time to get vinyl for your record. So when we turned the record in, I think that would have put us in like December or something like that. And you can't put out a record in December. So that's like a bad right. move because yeah. one, the music industry shut down from like December to February. So I think the record's dropping in February, I think. But yeah. All right. And you already have a music video filmed for it? We have four. Oh, wow. We have four films. So uh, we don't have four edited, but we have four shot. <laughs> <laughs> So what what is on the horizon for you then? I mean, uh, waiting for the album to come out and pumping all that, it's going to be a lot of marketing and stuff. But for you yourself, like, you, what are you focusing on? Right now, I'm just like, so I also, I'm like the executive assistant to, uh, you know, Nuclear Power Trio. I'm one of the three. So it's kind of, you know, babysitting them when they want a sandwich and just like... <laughs> You know, like making runs. Yes, I know you got a wa- You want a Whopper, Don? I'll go get you a Whopper. You know, <laughs> things like that. And you know, like I'll have to go back to Colorado uh, at some point with the guys to uh, help with that record. Um, so, I mean, that's in the writing process. So there's a lot of just like me waiting around. Uh, that's that's primarily what's going on with me right now. Is you know, just being a glorified bus boy. Uh, for for nuclear power trio, uh, but. wow! <laughs> That's it. Just sounds so funny when you say it. Like that. <laughs> uh, dude, it's, a, it's an abusive relationship. They, it's a, they're horrible employers. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get forty lashes for that. Oh man. Uh. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is a staple question that I always ask people, and it's it's kind of corny, but I still like to ask it. What advice would you give to someone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Um, wow. Man, do you, do you get a lot of like props for being a good interviewer? No. Because, I, <laughs> because damn. Damn, son. Uh, <laughs> You're making me blush. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know... You know, I, since you said that, I feel like I need to give a shout out now to Ben McDougal because you did an interview with him and he's in that uh, Kamloops radio station. He's like 14 years old and he interviewed yeah. you and he interviewed like Cannibal Corpse and Danko Jones. That kid, he said he was born in 2006. I yeah. graduated in 2006. And here, if I wanted to like, interview you, I had to do research by listening to his interview. So huge <laughs> shout out to that kid. He's just killing it. Yeah, he, that was, uh, the, what a great interview that was, yeah, too. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I just needed to say that. No, that's fine. Yeah, props props to, to him. Yeah. Um, dude, I mean, you just got to keep at it. I mean, that's, that's really all it is. If you love enough, you just got to go. And, uh, you know, I, I think that there's, it's good to have, contingencies do you know what i mean right but yeah having contingencies does not mean giving up on your dream right be responsible have a fallback plan maybe make your fallback plan in line with your dreams right so it doesn't distract from you reaching your goals um because i i, I hate where it's like don't let anything stop you don't let us like yeah don't let anything stop you but you also have to be responsible because you don't want to be like end up on the street right so it just you have to put a lot of thought into it it's like what do i want how can i make a living while i'm working at that and you'd be surprised like for me um you know a legion doesn't you know doesn't pay me but in a way I only have a career because of a legion because uh, my I teach guitar and most of my guitar students are a legion fans. So in that way, a legion pays me and I make a you know a, a decent living and I have a savings account. And <laughs> you know what I mean. So, right. um, so by teaching, 
I am able to fulfill my dream, right? To give an example of what I'm talking about. So, Wise words from someone who knows everybody. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners? Oh, thank you. Thank you for listening to my babble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how direct I was today. I right? kind of scatterbrained, so I apologize if I meandered a little bit from, from no, answering it was, your questions. It was great. Uh, I had a blast. This has been such a great time. And uh, where is the easiest way for people to find you guys online or to follow everything you're doing? Oh, man, like it used to be Facebook, and now it's like it's kind of Instagram. But then again... Instagram is kind of becoming TikTok. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. We even have a TikTok page. So, if you can spell our dumb band name, which is a <laughs> real challenge. <laughs> A-L-L-E-G-A-E-O-N. Allegion or Allegion. Agamemnon, alligator pie, a leggy blonde. I've heard all of these. <laughs> At least you didn't put a V in there for no reason. Allegion. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> to be very true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone, you've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with Greg Burgess from the band Legion. Greg, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Oh, dude, anytime. <laughs>